Our eyes help us to see things. The human eye is like a digital camera. There are different parts of the eye that carry out different functions. When we look at objects, the light that reflects off the object enters the eye. The cornea is the clear front surface of the eye. It acts as a window that allows light to get into the eye. The cornea bends the light before it enters the eye. The light entering passes through a watery substance called the aqueous humor. This fills the area behind the cornea. The iris is the colored part of the eye. It's a thin circular structure that controls how much light enters the eye. The iris is made up of muscles that contract and relax in order to control how much light will enter the eye. The light rays pass to the pupil. The pupil is a black hole that appears at the center of the iris. In bright light, the circular muscles contract and the radial muscles relax, so the pupil appears smaller, therefore less light enters. This helps us to protect our eyes from too much light entering. In dim light, the radial muscles contract and the circular muscles relax, so the pupil appears bigger. Therefore more light enters, so we can see in darker settings. The lens is behind the pupil. It helps us to see things clearly. The lens focuses and defocuses depending on how far an object is. It does this by changing its shape. The ciliary muscles help to control the shape of the lens. So if something is close to your eye, then the lens needs to focus on it to see it clearly. The lens is able to do this as the ciliary muscles contract and make the lens thicker. If something is far away from your eye, then the ciliary muscles relax and make the lens slim. The light then passes through the vitreous humor and eventually reaches the layer at the back of the eye, which is called the retina. Most of the light that enters the eye is focused on a focal point on the retina. This is known as the macula, or the fovea. The retina is made up of cells that converts the light that enters your eye into electrical impulses. The retina perceives the world as upside down, but it's the brain that flips the image, like this. The electrical impulses then travel through the optic nerve, which is at the back of the eye. This area where the optic nerve is located is also a blind spot. The optic nerve connects to the occipital lobe in the back of the brain. The brain processes this information and that's how we're able to see. Did you know that there are six muscles that control eye movement? The eye has six muscles that are attached to the sclera. This is the surrounding white part of the eye. These extraocular muscles allow us to track objects without turning our heads. These muscles allow us to look up, down, side to side and diagonally. Our nose helps us to smell. The nose is part of the respiratory system. The entrance of the nose are the nostrils. The nostrils are separated by the septum. The septum is made up of cartilage. Cartilage is a thin piece of skin and bone. If you wiggle your nose, you'll be able to move the cartilage around. The nasal cavity is a space behind the nose. The nasal cavity connects to the back of the throat. We are able to smell things due to the olfactory epithelium. This lines the olfactory cleft of the nasal cavity. The olfactory epithelium contains special receptors which recognize the smell and send signals along the olfactory nerve to the olfactory bulb. The signals are sent around parts of the brain in order to be interpreted as a smell. This can be a good smell or a bad smell. When you inhale air through your nose, it enters the nasal passage and travels into the nasal cavity. 
From the nasal cavity, the air moves down through the trachea and into the lungs. When you exhale, the air exits the lungs, up through the trachea and then moves into the nasal cavity and out through the nasal passage. The nose is specialised in its functions. It warms, filters and moistens the air before it goes into the lungs. The hair in your nostrils, alongside mucus, traps unwanted particles such as dust and germs which could be harmful to your lungs. So that's how we smell things. Our ears help us to hear things. The auditory system is the ears and the brain. The ears convert sound energy into neural signals which are received by the brain. This signal travels through the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. Some sounds can be very loud and some sounds can be very quiet. In order for us to hear a sound, the sound must travel all the way from our ear and to the brain. The parts of the ear involved in this process are the ear, eardrum, hammer, anvil, stapes and cochlea. The three bones, hammer, anvil and stapes are known as the ossicle. First, a sound wave falls on the outer part of the ear. This is called the pinna. The sound is sent through the ear canal into the middle ear. The sound hits the eardrum. It vibrates and causes the three bones to shake. The sound then travels through the cochlea. This is the circle tube in the inner ear which is filled with liquid. The vibrations caused by the ossicle results in waves in the cochlear fluid. This turns the sound vibrations into liquid vibrations. There are many hairs in the cochlea. As the liquid moves, the hairs also move which creates nerve signals that are sent through the auxiliary nerve into the brain. The brain then processes the signal as sound. And this is how we hear. Our tongue helps us to taste. The tongue is a muscular organ. It's very flexible and we are able to move it around. It helps us with our speech so we're able to pronounce words correctly. It helps us to taste things as it contains taste buds that allow us to perceive taste. And the tongue aids in digestion. So when we put something in our mouth, our tongue helps us to move the food around our mouth when chewing it. Once the chewed food is mixed with the saliva, the tongue moves the food to the back of the throat and down to the stomach. The tongue has a rough surface consisting of small bumps. These are called papillae. These help with gripping food when chewing and they contain taste buds. The taste buds help us to detect different types of flavours such as salty, sour, sweet, bitter and umami. The taste receptors on the tongue are able to taste food when it's moistened in the mouth by saliva. However, the nose and tongue work together in order to be able to taste. Did you know that much of the flavour of our food comes from our sense of smell? Our skin helps us with our sense of touch. The skin is the largest organ in the human body. The skin has many useful purposes. It absorbs sunlight for vitamin D. It controls our internal temperature. It protects us from the outside environment, for example, harmful germs. And the skin allows for the sensation of touch. The sensation of touch is important 
as it allows us to feel the types of material. We can feel different types of material. For example, some things can be hard, soft, wet, dry, hot, cold, etc. Our skin is made up of three important layers. These are known as the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. The layer below the hypodermis is the muscle. The epidermis is the outer layer and it's made up of mostly skin cells. These cells constantly die and get replaced with new cells regularly. This layer provides a waterproof barrier against microbes. This layer also contains melanin, which determines the colour of your skin. If you have more melanin, then you'll have darker skin. On the other hand, if you have less melanin, then you will have lighter skin. Melanin is important as it helps to protect our skin from harmful sun rays. The dermis is the second layer of the skin. It contains hair follicles, sweat glands, tough connective tissue and nerve endings. The nerve endings help to send messages to the brain regarding what you've touched and the brain decides how you'll respond. For example, if you touch something that's very hot, such as a hot pan, then the nervous system will tell the brain to move away from it. The sweat glands is where the sweat is generated and is released through the epidermis through the pores. Sweat is important as it helps us to regulate our body temperature. For example, when you become too hot, then you will sweat more so your body can cool down. The hypodermis is the third layer. It's also known as the subcutaneous tissue. This layer is mainly made up of fat and connective tissue. Fat is important for our body as it helps us to keep warm and provides protection for our bones and organs. Therefore, the hypodermis's main function is to store fat for these reasons. So the skin contains sensory receptors which send signals to the central nervous system. This is how we feel things.